Wes. Let's, let's go to practice, man. Up, dude? You know, right, man? Yeah, man. So these uh, these mornings, this is where you have to drench yourself either in motivation and get yourself ready for training, or 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 wake yourself up. You're kind of in the midst of the abyss right now. Yeah, there's a lot of times, especially, and I feel like in the professional industry, when no matter what profession you're in, when you're when competition is a, is the main part of of your job and you're judged every day based upon what you do. I feel like that is the mindset where a lot of athletes, salespersons, people of, of the competitive industry, actors, uh, you know, in entertainment especially, you know, I feel, I feel like a lot of people can lose sight of just how beautiful life is, you know? I struggle with that a lot. I don't know about you, but there's, there, you know, especially in times of adversity, you struggle with, you know, losing appreciation for all of the little things, all the small things. So, actually that's what I think about a lot every morning is just trying to, trying to create an intention of gratitude. Because man, I, I you know, as a human being, and uh, it's our nature to, I think, sometimes think, negatively I don't know about you what, what do you think do you think negatively I mean there have been there have been times in my life man where I've been I, I've struggled to get out of negative mindsets you know it's easy to, to buy into that sort of mindset it's easy to think negatively especially when I went through an injury man I, I got into a mindset where it was so self-destructive man I was beating myself up every day I <clears throat> didn't enjoy playing soccer anymore. Life wasn't fun because it hurt to walk and it hurt to run and do all the things that I know I love doing. So then eventually I kept myself in indoors, right? And I wasn't going out and being active or giving everything in physi physiotherapy. And all of a sudden I felt like this caged animal and there were mornings where I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed, man. You know, I'm... I remember I'm laying in, in, in the bed and my girlfriend at the time was, was working. She worked from home and she was literally one room over working away. And I'm thinking, man, she's getting all this work done and I can't even get myself out of bed. But even more so, I can't even bring myself to tell her how I feel, you know? And when I had this ACL injury and this micro fracture technique, what they put you for the first six weeks in what's called a CPM machine it's called controlled passive motion machine and literally what happens is you put your leg in this motorized machine and it just bends your your knee from zero to 90 degrees in a very controlled passive motion and you're, you you must spend at least eight hours a day in this machine and that sounds fun. in a sl in a slump position and that was the beginning of my depression man and I laid in that machine and I, and I just was overwhelmed by negative thoughts. When I began those negative thoughts, I remember thinking, ah, it's gonna get better. You know, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. But then, after those six weeks, you know, there was like, you know, the, the S word. You know, I, I was thinking, man, maybe it's better if, if I just don't face this anymore. I, I don't even enjoy the, the person that I am. I don't like doing this anymore, man. And maybe it's just better if, if I just, you know, just just take myself out of the situation. And it got to a point to where those thoughts got so real in my mind that I was having anxiety that I was actually gonna do it. And I started to have panic attacks and stuff. And all, all at uh, away from my family in a in a different country and and. Man, it, it can just show you just how powerful depression and, and negative thought processes can be, you know? I think too is like, you know, regardless of how you want to explain it or, or it's real, right? <laughs> it's what you went through, it's real, it's your experience and... And, and even though I'm, I'm healthy now and, and I'm playing and, and 
am so thankful that I'm back playing and, and, and back in, in the environment. There, there are days even still where I fight the darkness and where I'll wake up in the morning and I'll think, man, I don't, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't enjoy this. I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. And, and, it, and it's real, man. It is real. And it, and it can blindside you. It can make you make decisions that you, that are so uncharacteristic of yourself. And I feel like we're not alone in this battle, you know, and, and, the greatest thing that I've realized through this process is the only way that I can help myself really is by helping others, mm. you know, and it's so, it's such a fulfilling moment when you can connect with another human being, despite what it is they're going through and you can bring some light into their, into their life for a split second. You know, we went and we um, and we we did your appearance up in up in Wake Forest, and there was a there was a young boy there. Um, his name escapes me right now, but um, we were there to play soccer. But all he wanted to talk about were the Avengers and <laughs> and, and Spider Man and like Marvel comics. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, well, you know, I'm supposed to be here to teach this kid soccer. But at the end of the day, all this kid really, really wants to do, what really puts a smile on his face, is if I talk to him about Marvel characters, about Superman or Spider-Man, and you know, and he can talk to me about uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, and, and so all I did that all that entire time was to try to keep that smile on his face. Soccer became non-existent to me at the moment, um, and it, and it was the most fun that I had had in a long time in an appearance because. I was really connected with this kid who, who was, he suffers from autism. No matter what someone's going through, I feel like if we take a second to connect to individuals and to tap into what they care about and go beyond ourselves, man, I think that's how we, we help each other. And that's how we help ourselves. So in essence, you know? you're saying life's about relationships and not about accomplishment yeah and it's and it's, it's ironic as well because going through my depression and my suicidal thoughts I I damaged some of the best relationships and friendships that I've made to that point as a human being and it took losing great friends and a great relationship and and, and family like individuals in my life to learn to appreciate that type of stuff so you know, as, as tough as adversity is, it's the greatest teacher. I mean, look at this. Look at look at the field. Look at look at these beautiful fields that that Cary, the city of Cary, provide for us. Our stadium, one of the best in in the league. You know, how can you not pull into this area and, and not just show appreciation and show gratitude? For it?